You know, as I'm the last person on here, I'd really just like to thank and congratulate TEDx in Brussels. They did an amazing job today, really. Shall we say that? I'd like to thank Sam and Walter, the volunteers, all the staff. They're really, what a fantastic job. Anyway, as Tim Exile said, um, my brain is full. What about you, sir? Is your brain full? Yeah. So, you know, like cereal boxes, when you take the cereal out of a cereal box and you put it in another box, you can shake it. You can get a little bit more stuff in. Um, I'd like to ask if you guys would do a little shake and stretch with me so we can fit one more talk in. Is that possible? <laughs> so, can I ask you to stand up? Would you mind? We're going to take three breaths and a little shake. All right. So, we're going to breathe in with the nose and out with the mouth. Good. So, breathe in with your nose. Ready? And make an R sandwich to breathe out. Ah! Now a shake. Shake that cereal box. Good, good. Breathe in through your nose. Ah! Good. Let's have a stretch. Stretch your shoulders like this. Stretch. Good. You're all going in different ways, but it's totally okay. Don't fall off the balcony, you people up there. <laughs> all right, good. And one last breathe in through the nose. Ready? And out. Ah! Now you can sit down. Thank you. All right. I'm a musician and I'm a scientist. I'm a songwriter and a technology inventor, mostly working with audio. And I've spent my life's work trying to find the right music, at the right place, at the right time. So music affects us consciously. Pretty obvious, right? We all understand that. But more importantly, it affects our non-conscious mind in really surprising ways. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about music and your non-conscious mind. And I'm going to tell you why you're not getting laid. And why you can't focus effectively at work, sometimes. And the answer is to do with the right music at the right place and the right time. Or more accurately, the wrong music at the wrong place and the wrong time. So music has an incredible power to trigger states in us. Um, people who stutter, I don't know if you know this, people who stutter can often sing without problems. There's some very famous singers, B.B. King, Carly Simon, Mark Antony, stutterers who can sing. Dementia patients who've become very debilitated uh, have been seen to temporarily snap out of their condition when they hear a familiar song. And this happened to a friend of mine just a couple of weeks ago. His grandmother, who had severe dementia, um, surprised everyone. They went to see her in the hospital, and she surprised everyone. A Cool and the Gang song came on the radio, and she snapped up like this, and she busted out the moves to celebration. Come on, and then went straight back down again. People were like, Grandma, you've not said a thing for three years. <laughs> so recent research has suggested that rhythm and music actually evolved before language. And it certainly makes sense if you think about the caveman communication. You know, there's a guy knocking on a log, knock, 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 and a hot caveman girl over here, knock, 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 knock. Right? You can see that um, reacting, creating and reacting to music uh, is a core part of being human. So let's think about some artists. U2, The Beatles, Jay-Z, uh, Beats Antique, Miley Cyrus. It doesn't matter what it is. This music is designed for your conscious attention. That's what music is. It's meant to move you, make you dance, to stimulate you. It's meant to uh, just touch you in some kind of way. And the idea is you actively listen to it. And that's why you like it and buy it. But when you're trying to do something else, while you're trying to work or study, and you play music in the background, music that you like and love is actually distracting. And it jams your selective attention and focus. So I'll come back to this point in a minute. Let's talk about your non-conscious mind. 
and how it affects things you do, and how it is affected by music. Here's your brain. And here is your limbic system. Your limbic, the limbic circuits underpin your emotions and feelings. And it's where all the fun stuff happens. And it activates your flight or fight reflex. And your limbic is constantly monitoring your environment to keep you safe. It's looking for danger and reward, including food and sex. Not always in that order, of course. And when a stimulus occurs, a sound, or something you see out of the corner of your eye, your, your limbic circuit is trying to figure out the evolutionarily critical question, which is, do I need to kill it, eat it, or mate with it? It's true. And I'm going to demonstrate this for you right now. You ready? So work with me for a minute. And we're going to demonstrate it with math. <laughs> no, really. So let's start with an easy one. Just run along with in your head. Don't, don't chat it out. So two plus two. Oh, someone's not listening to instructions here. Don't chat it out. Don't cheat. Um, plus five. Okay, times two. We have some audio. Good. Times ten. Good. Minus nine. Good. Plus one. Okay, good. Plus fifteen. Okay, minus six. Good. Times eleven. Okay, minus seventy-five. Are you with me? 75, good. Plus six. Come on, keep up with me. Minus nine. Okay, minus one. Minus one. Anybody got the answer? 1911. <laughs> The point is, I got lost too. <laughs> so, seriously, what just happened? Well, your limbic system stopped you being able to fully concentrate uh, on the task at hand. Uh, this is the fight or flight me mechanism being triggered, and you paying more attention to it than the uh, problem at hand or, or trying to. The limbic is sending distracting messages to your conscious mind. And it's saying, hey, look at this, look at that. Want to mate with that? So my limbic system was being super triggered. I'm on stage, I'm trying to do the math, I've got this, I'm clicking this thing, I'm being really distracted. But here's the thing. When you're sitting at your desk on a Monday morning, trying to concentrate on work or study, and you just can't seem to focus, What's happening is that that mechanism, the limbic mechanism, is like having a bunch of kids in the back seat saying, are we there yet? <laughs> you know the feeling, right? So I've spent the last three years researching the way that your brain responds to music under these exact circumstances. Seeing if there's a way to soothe and engage your non-conscious mind uh, in a controlled way, and to allow you to focus better, longer, when you're working or studying. And I've created a systematic and scientifically uh, based way of doing this, with specific types of music delivered in specific sequences. So the question is, what is this music that lights up the brain at the right place, at the right time, when you're trying to get stuff done? Some kinds of music work better than others. The most important thing to try and find music to help you work while you're studying or, or, or working is no vocals, right? No vocals ever, even in languages you don't understand. We are wired to notice the human voice, and um, if you're trying to work or study, you'll find it distracting. Other things, you need to find music that has no instruments that sound like the human voice, cellos saxophones, and surprisingly, electric guitar. It's 
Right. And the reason why is this. Think about Eric Clapton for a minute. Think about Layla, the song Layla. Layla! Right? If you look at A of that, the sound of that, and dooba 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 do, the, the sound of that guitar and his voice are very, very similar. And that's why we like it with our conscious brain. Music we like often has instruments that sound like the human voice. I'll show you a couple of examples of the kinds of music I, I mean and what it sounds like. So this is a system that I've built. It's called Folks at Will. Um, there's a bunch of different genres that work well. You can see there. You'll hear the classical channel come up here. You'll notice that the music sounds like music. Right? There's no strange bleeps, no sciencey things. Some people prefer electronica. And all the tracks that I've used on this system have been remixed, re-edited, and remastered in very specific ways, subtle but important ways. I'll talk about that in a minute. And what works is based on your brain type. The more hyper you are, the more ADD you are, the more energy you need to put in the music when you're trying to concentrate. This is ambient, so for anyone who's not ADD, this will work fine, but if you're ADD, that's not going to work. Oh, a squirrel. <laughs> is that another squirrel? <laughs> so here's the science behind this. Um, here's a summary of a study I did recently with Dr. Stephen Sidoroff at UCLA. Uh, he's a psychologist and psychiatrist there. Um, and these are the areas of the brain that we found affected by this, P3 and 4. And the image on the left here shows the brain when not using the right music. And the image on the right shows the brain in its optimal state of efficiency when the subjects were listening to the right music at the right place at the right time. And the research showed that subjects using this system were significantly more focused. It's kind of interesting. And I'm also working now with uh, another group of San Francisco-based uh, brain scientists led by Dr. Evian Gordon, um, investigating something called habituation. We're using the, the world's biggest uh, data, brain database to do this. And habituation is, is really interesting. It's one of the things that makes us human. Um, it's a technical term for a decrease in attention to a stimulus after repeated presentations. All right, let's... Uh, talk about what that means in plain English. So my ex used to say to me, and most people here will be able to understand this, did you hear what I said? You're not even listening to me, right? And the correct reply is, I'm not listening to you because I'm not even hearing you, because I've literally tuned her out. It's a decrease in response to a stimulus, right? That's a good example of habituation at work. Why is that important to listening to music while you're trying to work? I'll tell you why. Your brain switches off to the focusing, soothing effects of the music after a certain period because of habituation. You're tuning it out. And I've been working on ways to subtly change the music stream to counter this response and to extend your, your uh, attention span further. Have you ever been to a live gig and the band does the wrong song? Right? They lose the crowd. We're all familiar with that. It's a good example of the wrong music, the wrong place at the wrong time for your conscious mind. But I found that your non-conscious mind is exquisitively sensitive to changes in background music, much more so than your conscious mind. And so your non-conscious mind notices tiny changes in your local environment. And a background music stream needs to have exactly enough things change in it to keep you engaged, but not too much, so that your conscious mind notices it. I've done a lot of research into this with my team, and we've figured out what to do. You can change. Here's a quick sort of very scientific graph. Um, but all you need to look at from here is the way that these peaks and, 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 and troughs. And when you start concentrating, what happens is about 20 minutes or so you can uh, concentrate, and then you'll start fading out. And so we have figured out what to do to change the music stream to trick your brain through these habituation cycles. And we found it's possible to extend the, ex the, the uh, attention uh, time for people as much as three or 400%. It's quite astonishing. 
And this is a complete non sequitur, but I'd really like to say it's a little like hypnotizing a chicken. <laughs> Do you know, anybody know about hypnotizing chickens? Yeah, it's crazy. You get, this is completely irrelevant, but I really want to, I've always wanted to talk about this. You get a chicken, you turn it upside down, don't hurt it, it's a live chicken, turn it upside down, and then you get your finger in front of it, and you draw a line in the dirt and step away. And it'll stay there, look it up, it's on YouTube. It's fantastic. <laughs> that whole process is a little bit like habituation on the brain when you're trying to focus and concentrate. Trust me. Anyway, let's look at a really great example of what happens when you listen to the wrong music at the wrong place at the wrong time. Getting laid, finally. Finally. We've got to talk about that, right? We all know what happens or doesn't when we get the mood wrong. It doesn't take much. Et maintenant, la réponse de la vieille question, voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? La prochaine partie n'est pas pour les francophones, parce que tout le monde sait que vous faites l'amour tout le temps. Non? Pas comme les anglophones. Et puis je parle un peu français. <laughs> Bien sûr. Hein? So, um, let's talk about sex. How many of you are married? Well, we all know why you're not getting laid. <laughs> Uh, but for the rest of you, you know, you've got to get the mood right. Um, lights down. Not too cold, not too hot. Maybe a glass of champagne or two. Uh, run a bubble bath, cell phones off. Uh, and the right feel-good music on the stereo. Right? Let's talk a little about that. What's the best music to help out here? You don't want to trigger the wrong limbic response. Food, sex, and danger. Right? Not, right? You've got to get that right. Well, you need something that isn't going to take away uh, too much attention for the task in hand, so to speak. <laughs> but not too bland that it doesn't set enough of the mood. And if you get the playlist wrong, here's an example. Um, Sade, yes. Sinatra, Barry White, uh, Marvin Gaye. Fantastic. And then Motorhead. <laughs> right? You with me? It's not going to go so well. So I'd like to end uh, by talking about some other factors um, that we found really affect your focus. Because this talk really is about focus and being efficient when you're working. So these are five things that we found really make a difference. One is don't try and work for longer than about 90 minutes at a time. Sit up in a comfortable chair. Don't sit with your back to the entrance. This is really important, because if I'm trying to do this and all you guys are behind me, my, li my limbic system's kind of going, there's a lot of people behind you looking at you, right? Um, this is obvious, but quit <laughs> Facebook and email. I mean, turn it off if you're trying to work. And this is the most important thing. Don't listen to music you like and love. Remember, it's going to distract you. If you're one of the two people out of three who likes to listen to music when you work, remember, what you listen to has a significant impact on your productivity. I'd love to hear from you, really. Let me know what kind of music helps you get laid. <laughs> oh, and get stuff done at work. So, Knowing how your non-conscious brain is affected, uh, affected by your music choice when you really need to concentrate is a real game changer. Thank you very much.